This video will explain how to translate predicate statements with restricted domains. So the idea, a domain is really what the statement or the argument is about. It's the class of individuals that the uh, statement is supposed to apply to or the argument is supposed to apply to. Now normally we take the domain is just the entire world and we don't need to say that. However, sometimes we want to restrict the domain of a statement or an argument in order to avoid needlessly complex statements or arguments. So consider the statement, there are mature chestnut trees on way bald. Well, potential domains are mature trees, chestnut trees, or trees on way bald. So basically, in an existential statement, any predicate can become the domain. So if we have the domain is mature trees, well then when we translate there are mature chestnut trees on way of bald, we don't have to say the part about mature trees because that's already given as part of the domain. So we can just ignore that part of the statement and just say there exists an X such that X is a chestnut tree and X is on way of bald. Likewise, if we have chestnut trees as the domain, we can leave that out of the translation. So we would just say, there exists an X such that X is a mature tree and X is on way of bald. And if we restrict the domain to trees on way of bald, then we would say, there exists an X such that X is a mature tree and X is a chestnut tree. We can also restrict the domain further by combining domains. So if we said that our domain was mature chestnut trees, Well, then the translation would be, there exists an X such that it's on way of bald. Likewise, if our domain was mature trees on way of bald, then the translation of the statement would be, there exists an X such that X is a chestnut tree. However, we need to be a little bit careful when restricting domains in universal statements. Consider the statement, all dogs go to heaven. Well, potential domains are dogs or things that go to heaven. So if we have our domain as dogs, well, then we would translate the statement as sorry, technology. Sorry about that technology. Okay, so if we want to translate the statement, all dogs go to heaven, and we have the domain restricted to dogs, well then our translation would be, for every X, X goes to heaven. So the dogs part is just taken for granted as being part of the statement. So it really still is the antecedent of the statement, it's just not expressed out loud. However, if we restrict the domain to things that go to heaven, and then we try to translate the statement as for every X, if X is a dog, 
Well, what that ends up saying is that for every x, if x goes to heaven, then x is a dog, which is not the same thing as the original sentence. So that won't work. So it turns out that we can only, in a universal statement, we can only restrict the domain by the things that are in the subject of the statement. We can't restrict the domain using something that's in the that's being said about that subject because then that ends up switching what's the subject and what's being said about it. If we had a more complicated statement, suppose we had um, all good dogs go to heaven. Well, then we could we could um, restrict the domain by dogs, and we would say, for every x, if x is good, then x goes to heaven. Or we could restrict the domain to good things, and then we would say, for every x, if x is a dog, then x goes to heaven. Or we could restrict the domain even more. We could restrict the domain to good dogs. And then we would say that for every x, x goes to heaven. Because all good dogs go to heaven. And we're only talking about good dogs in that statement because we've restricted the domain to being just talking about good dogs. So everything goes to heaven.